Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back, uh, we are going to look into uh, droplet uh, vaporization and then subsequently droplet combustion. Now as I told uh, in previous classes, this is very, very important, okay. Why? Because uh, in uh, aero, all aero engine combustors uh, essentially use liquid fuels like kerosene, uh, different variants of jet fuels and uh, even the gas turbines, ramjets, scramjets, everybody, all of these engines uh, and even afterburners want to use uh, jet fuels, different variants of jet fuels in some form and then this has to be burned. Of course, that is because of the large energy density. Now, how do you burn it, okay? Uh, you cannot have direct combustion of the liquid itself. So, the liquid must uh, evaporate okay? and, uh, and then it must be burnt. Now, at the same, you want the liquid to evaporate quickly also okay? because uh, you want uh, fast burning of a uh, lot of fuel in lot of air. Uh, so, uh, to quickly evaporate, uh, if you have a pool like that, the, uh, the, the surface area of that pool is not very large compared to its total volume. So, to increase the surface to volume ratio, it is best to have uh, these droplets created, okay? small droplets. The smaller the droplet, the better is the surface to volume ratio. You can understand it clearly, it is like uh, S by V is 4 pi R square divided by 4 third pi R cube. So, it is proportional to 1 by R, right. So, smaller is the, uh, uh, smaller is the radius, the larger is the surface to volume ratio. So, one needs to have a very small droplets uh, formed. Uh, so, and this can be uh, created by a spray, but once this spray is created, once this droplet is formed, the question is that uh, how does this droplets evaporate in the, in the, in, an, uh, in a given hot environment. Of course, inside a gas turbine, the temperature is high of the order of about 700 Kelvin. So, is uh, same in a scramjet, mm, the static temperature is pretty high. Um, of course, once again, that comes out of thermodynamic reasons. The re same reason why the pressure is high, the temperature must be high because only when you add um, heat in this uh, kind of uh, environments, uh, you can add high pressure mm, and uh, you can uh, basically extract useful work. So, uh, combustion happens in a, uh, happens in these air breathing engines in a, in, in high pressure and the incoming air flow is also at high temperature, alright. So, uh, basically we are, you are injecting a spray uh, like this, uh, uh, you are injecting a, uh, you are injecting a, um, you are essentially injecting uh, if it is a, um, say if it is a uh, aircraft engine, if this is your, uh, if this is your say your combustor. This is the uh, typical cross section of a ca of an annular combustor, and uh, this is uh, the solars, and this is your injectors. So your liquid uh, is injected like this. Uh, the spray is formed like this, where the air comes from like this, and it is swirling, and uh, the spray comes along like this, mm, and then these sprays will break up, and these droplets will form. Okay, different droplets of different sizes will form. And each of these droplets will essentially uh, can be will undergo evaporation, and the method by which these droplets will undergo evaporation, the me mechanism and the heat and mass transfer associated with it, uh, that we will take up in this class. So here you have a single droplet, um, and uh, uh, with this is now my interface of the um, of the is the is a liquid air interface which is the droplet radius and we can say that at the droplet in at this just uh, above the droplet radius my um, species mass fraction is uh, y1s and the temperature is ts and uh, of course the droplet is uh, uh, the 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 droplet is uh, uh, is uh, the droplet is uh, uh, is undergoing uh, evaporation. Uh, in some cases, it can also undergo condensation. So, when it is undergoing uh, vaporization, it's, uh, the, this Y1S will diffuse out 
and it will go out and this hot ambient has to supply heat, uh, supply the latent heat of evaporation. Mm, while it is condensing, the vapor has to essentially going in and the heat of this is essentially going out, right. So, that is the thing, but in our case, in our for our interest, we will basically look into the droplet evaporation and the ambient is at a species mass fraction is y 1 infinity and its uh, temperature is T infinity. So, uh, as we said that droplet dynamics vaporization combustion is the unit process in many natural and technological processes. Okay. It is uh, it's not only this thing in terms of spray drying in terms of like uh, uh, cooling the, all this uh, droplet evaporation is a very uh, important phenomena that needs to be understood. Mm, so, uh, spray uh, why we do have a spray because spray increases the total surface liquid uh, surface area for gasification for example, spray painting, insecticide spraying and spray combustion which is a process of interest in a air breathing combustion engine okay um, air breathing aero engine so the droplet processes and all these things like inkjet printing rain drop formation nanoparticle formation and there are different uh, things which are involved in droplet process so similar to the beaker problem this we will consider the droplet evaporation problem except that in this case we do not have cartesian coordinates we will choose uh, uh, spherical coordinates but it's one dimensional because essentially we will be we will consider the symmetry um, in the uh, we will consider the droplet to be axisymmetric um, or we will consider the to be droplet to be symmetric in the in the azimuthal and the zenith plane in that is in the r theta in the r theta uh, coordinates and um, we will only have r variation. So, uh, this becomes a one dimensional problem. Okay. So, if it is a one dimensional problem by applying continuity, um, okay, by applying continuity we get d d r of r square rho u is equal to 0 um, and this gives a mass um, uh, flow rate m v of this uh, vapor to be essentially 4 pi r square rho u. We can say that this is uh, I mean you can ask that where there are two phases one is the droplet phase one is the air phase mm, why are you only considering mass flux of the vapor phase. Uh, this is because uh, we the only this uh, droplet uh, is evaporating it is going out then there is no condensation of the air that is happening uh, as a result of this we can say mv is equal to 4 pi r square um, times rho u which is equal to constant. And then we can solve the species diffusion and the species uh, uh, conservation equation once again you get this as the uh, uh, we, we essentially this is the equation this is this comes from the, uh, the convective velocity this comes from the diffusive velocity and these two will give you the the the, the, the species uh, velocity and uh, we can get integrate it and uh, just as we did it in the previous uh, class for the bigger problem and we will get uh, the same thing, but here we have just used a, a non-dimensional mass um, uh, uh, mv non-dimensional mass for it that is mv tilde and that is given by ln 1 plus bmv exactly similar form you will get whereas bmv is a mass transfer number which is equal to 1 y 1 by 1 1 s minus 1 uh, y 1 infinity that is is once again the potential uh, for driving the uh, evaporation uh, in the droplet and that is essentially the difference between the uh, the uh, the mass fraction at the surface and the mass fraction at the at infinity and that is uh, this is uh, normalized by um, 1 minus y the mass fraction at the surface and of course the normalization of the mass flow rate that we have done is uh, is essentially is equal to mv tilde is equal to mv which is the actual mass flow rate divided by 4 pi lambda by cp rs now please pay attention to this particular normalization because this will turn out handy when we do the uh, d square law of droplet evaporation Okay. Now, once again uh, this is not enough because you do not know what your y 1 s is. So, this is uh, this uh, even if you can solve for m v tilde you do not know because this is unsolved for why you do not know what y 1 s is and that for to know why what y 1 s is you need the species uh, you need the energy conservation equation. Uh, this is reasonable because you see that um, uh, you cannot really solve the full problem just by the species diffusion because uh, ultimately the droplet is evaporating because somebody is supplying is the latent heat of vaporization and uh, the latent heat of vaporization is being supplied by the ambient. So, you have to consider the, the conduction um, and the convection processes that are involved to consider this uh, latent heat of uh, to, to, to close this problem and that is why you need to and that shows up in the fact that your y 1 s that is the mass fraction at the surface is uh, not known. And, um, 
And that is why you need to solve this energy conservation relation and that is what this yields. mv tilde is equal to nothing but 1 plus bhv, uh, 1 plus uh, with this uh, the uh, here heat transfer number and the heat transfer number is cpt infinity minus ts. Now, one thing to note is that in both cases uh, the heat transfer number, the mass transfer number in both the beaker problem as well as in the droplet problem they do not change. That is they are independent of geometry and as a result they are universal. That is why they are basically universal numbers. Okay. So, if you were once again, once again write it in the dimensional form, you get this same type of relation, but of course, here you know, it uh, changes a little bit. Uh, it is a 4 pi times a lambda by Cp by A times Rs divided by ln 1 plus BHV. And then the uh, mass flux at the surface, uh, then we can uh, divide the mass flux from by the mass flow rate divided by the droplet surface area from where the evaporation is taking place. And that uh, once again comes back to the same thing with lambda by Cp uh, di Rs, in the bigger problem it was L uh, uh, times L on 1 plus BHV. Okay. So, now, um, uh, what we can do is that uh, uh, this is so we, we have the when this is also is equal to rho d by as you see here um, uh, this is uh, and this is of course, uh, in uh, one one important thing to note is that here uh, we, we get uh, even in this uh, uh, when we do the species uh, conservation the equation of mass flow rate that we get is m v divided by lambda by c p we, we can apply it here because we assume that lambda by C p is essentially is equal to rho d or in other words Lewis number is equal to 1. Okay. So, because of that assumption we can assume that these two things are uh, uh, same uh, like that is uh, lambda by C p is essentially is equal to rho d and uh, from uh, mm, uh, now uh, from the overall conservation of the droplet mass. Okay. Now, what do we mean by that is that that of course, uh, you have the you have the let us go back a little bit. Now, what I mean is that uh, uh, um, of course, um, you have the um, you have the full uh, droplet and now this uh, droplet is uh, uh, is giving out this uh, uh, this vapor uh, that is essentially the droplet uh, liquid phase of the droplet is converting to a to the to this vapor phase and um, uh, now while that is happening since the liquid phase is being converted into the vapor phase the droplet has to shrink right because the liquid mass of the droplet is basically becoming vapor and that is going outside so this mass of the droplet has to reduce and uh, the volume of the droplet also has to reduce so uh, that means this this is giving out uh, uh, this droplet is giving out um, uh, this uh, vapor flux okay and uh, uh, for that it is uh, uh, this droplet has to shrink also. Okay. But of course, this happens in a such a manner that we can consider this uh, um, uh, while we do this analysis we can uh, while we do the analysis in the gas phase we can consider it to be in steady state. Um, but now we can essentially uh, uh, write that the m v that is the we can equate that is the, the rate at which the vapor is leaving the droplet at the surface uh, that is the mass flow rate of this uh, vapor uh, at the surface that is is equal to the rate of change of the mass of the droplet itself and that is the rate of change of the mass of the droplet at any particular time is given by 4 third pi r cube uh, time uh, rho l and uh, that is uh, the rate of change of that and of course, a minus sign comes because the droplet is shrinking. Okay. And uh, so, then uh, we can write it in this form, but we you see clearly here we have just done a small mathematical manipulation uh, that is um, uh, or mathematical or uh, jugglery that is uh, this 4 pi times rho l we have just written this thing that is d d t of uh, r s cube we have written this in terms of r s times d r s square d t. Of course, there is a constant involved right. Uh, so, um, that we have written and the why we have written that this will become apparent in a very short amount of time. So, now once you equate this thing that is uh, um, minus 2 pi rho l times r s d r s square d t is equal to this thing uh, that is uh, this guy. Okay which is nothing but 4 pi lambda by Cp Rs times ln of 1 plus Bv that is 4 pi lambda by Cp times Rs times ln 1 plus Bhv okay, or uh, 
Okay. And once you do that, uh, uh, once as soon as you do that, uh, then a uh, few things uh, cancel on both sides. Uh, and uh, this R, uh, you see this RS, RS cancels. Mm. So, we get is essentially a d r s square d t is equal to 2 times lambda by c p divided by rho l times ln of 1 plus b h v. Okay. And of course, if we integrate this and we call this as the uh, this uh, droplet uh, vaporization constant which is k because uh, you see these are all uh, 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 constant for this uh, particular uh, uh, problem and then which uh, this upon integration yields this uh, this thing that is r s square uh, is equal to r s 0 that is uh, this uh, this radius square at any time t uh, is equal to the r s uh, radius r s of the droplet at time t 0 that is the initial time and that is given by this k v t where there is a droplet uh, vaporization constant k v times this time t. Okay. So, essentially we can uh, if we set this r s to be equal to 0 okay, uh, sorry uh, this uh, if we can set that is the time it will complete vaporization means this essentially should be goes to 0. So, we get r s squared by k v is equal to the time uh, for, for vaporization. So, this is uh, the very revealing thing that is the total time for vaporization goes as r, r s square or essentially it is a d square that is a diameter square or the radius square. So, this uh, is the d square law indicating that the vaporization time decreases quadratically with the droplet size hence the principle of atomization that is if you um, uh, that is. Uh, so, this is the uh, thing that the time scale or the time for the complete vaporization is essentially equal to the radius square the initial radius of the droplet square divided by the kv the droplet vaporization constant. So, the large the time in changes quadratically. So, uh, larger droplet more time smaller droplet less is the time. So, if you can create a spray which atomizes into very very small droplet then it means that the spray will essentially become the, uh, the, the vapor fuel vapor cloud uh, in a very short amount of time and that is what is required. So, that we can have proper mixing and we can have uh, proper uh, combustion with less soot etcetera. Uh, and so, this is the thing that, uh, that, that, uh, that we wanted to discuss. Now, then we will uh, uh, finally, the topic is the d square law of droplet burning. So, far we have de discussed droplet vaporization. Now, once we have the vaporization, we will apply the principles of the non premix flame in the previous class uh, to understand the uh, droplet vaporization. So, now here we have the droplet, okay. And so, now instead of uh, and here you have the flame. So, the flame uh, is that because here you essentially you can have oxidizers uh, in the ambient um, as you see here this contains y 0 infinity t infinity. So, this contains the oxidizer uh, is in the ambient okay. and this uh, droplet evaporation will is droplet is basically a droplet of fuel. So, will this droplet will provide the fuel vapor, vapor this is the ambient contains oxidizer. So, the fuel vapor and the oxidizer meet and if you have a flame at this location at a certain stand of distance at a, at a certain radius uh, the, that radius will be given by this RF the flame radius. Yeah, so, this flame will provide will basically conduct heat in uh, will provide heat through conduction in both the droplet as well as in the ambient. The droplet uh, the heat that it provides to the droplet uh, will essentially help in sustaining the evaporation because it will this this flame is now going to provide the latent heat of evaporation required for the droplet to convert from this liquid phase to the gas phase. Okay. So, this uh, we will work with the coupling function uh, formulation and um, the solution procedure will be similar to that of pre vaporization. So, if you look into it this will be the structure of the flame. So, uh, here you have the y uh, once again s means the surface of the droplet you have the y f s which will continuously now decay because uh, would decay much faster because it will be consumed completely at the flame. The temperature will increase uh, from the droplet surface to the flame uh, radius because um, of course, uh, the uh, flame is conducting heat and then of course, it will again decay on this side because of conduction. Mm, so, this is side is the fuel side, this is the oxidizer side and uh, we assume that by the reaction sheet there is no fuel leakage uh, on this side, there is no oxi uh, there is no oxidizer leakage on this side. Uh, no oxidizer and there is no fuel on this side and also this will give a also a profile something like this. So, uh, now we will just do straight to the coupling function formulation 
but you should do it uh, derive this uh, by yourself also um, uh, and uh, by the coupling function formulation it just becomes very simple if you remember the coupling function it is essentially beta i is equal to t tilde plus y i tilde uh, t tilde once again we apply the Lewis number equal to 1 and t tilde is essentially this non the stoichiometric elevated C p t and uh, y i tilde is the stoichiometric elevated uh, y f by y f 0 stoichiometric elevated mass fraction and uh, once you do the formulation if you remember just uh, when we write it in the uh, spherical coordinates uh, we just get this form and uh, now once again we can just simply integrate in the previous uh, just as you did but before that we can just write it in a norm normalized um, form that is uh, it, we can write it as r by r s okay and then we if we integrate we get this uh, uh, forms once again and uh, now we have to apply the boundary conditions it is exactly the similar way as we did it for the chambered flame it is like the exactly like the chambered flame in uh, uh, but just in spherical coordinates mm, okay in spherical uh, coordinates so um, in the uh, boundary conditions that we uh, we have to apply um, uh, and the boundary conditions uh, are uh, essentially at r is equal to infinity that is here uh, your um, your y0 is equal to y0 infinity which is fixed the say if it is ar we your y0 is fixed by the uh, fact that the volume um, uh, percentage is about 21% of oxygen so this is that if you convert that into mass fraction this is the value that you get um, uh, some point 0.20 something etc why uh, 0 should be equal to uh, should be equal to uh, should be equal to um, uh, 0 uh, yf tilde because there is no uh, uh, reactant or there is no fuel leakage through the flame and t tilde is equal to t infinity now similarly at r tilde is equal to 1 that is at the r by r s is equal to 1 Mm, this is the boundary there and then uh, that is at this point uh, the your uh, basically this says that mm, um, uh, the your mc uh, uh, that is the mass uh, uh, rate of uh, that is a normalized uh, uh, mass rate of uh, evaporation which is also the mass rate of mass uh, flow rate of combustion um, uh, the burning rate is as in times yos mm, uh, if we apply it for the oxidizer that is uh, this um, the uh, uh, this uh, exactly this uh, oxidizer flow is exactly balanced by the diffusion and there is no uh, uh, net um, uh, flow of the um, uh, uh, of the oxidizer here because there is no uh, oxidizer condensation into the droplet that is happening then um, uh, we will uh, um, uh, see that um, we will look into the uh, we will uh, we will uh, look into this um, uh, 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 into the fuel so uh, but here there is uh, uh, there is uh, on the right hand side you have the fuel uh, uh, vapor flux so that is essentially is equal to the mc itself uh, by by before uh, as we have shown because it's a balance between your uh, uh, bulk velocity and the diffusion uh, molecular diffusion velocity and um, which is essentially the species velocity times the it's the corresponding density and all these things so it becomes essentially the mass flux of the species or the total mass flux of um, or the, or the um, mass flux that is uh, supporting the combustion that is being burnt and of course uh, we assume that the heat the flux is uh, for evaporation is uh, supplied by the by conduction and that is why it is a dtdr is equal to mc times qv and your t is equal to uh, the t temperature at the surface okay uh, now uh, then we can solve for this uh, coupling functions we can solve for beta 0 and beta f because your beta i is as, as, I, as we discussed here is beta i is nothing but um, uh, is, is, is nothing but your t tilde plus y i tilde uh, what uh, beta i can be it can be for fuel it can be for oxidizer okay so we solve for beta uh, beta oxidizer we solve for beta fuel and then we apply the reaction sheet assumption that is uh, on the left hand side on um, that is um, at a smaller radius here there is no oxidizer here there is no fuel and as soon as you do that we get the final solution where again you get the exactly similar form so these are the final solutions uh, pay attention to this so you get the um, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, we get this uh, similar thing that is uh, mc tilde is um, essentially equal to um, uh, essentially equal to your um, uh, lawn of 1 plus bhc that is once again vhc is if you remember is the uh, heat transfer number for combustion so this is the heat uh, transfer 
number 4 combustion previously was BHV which was heat transfer number for evaporation. We will see exactly now what the difference is. The difference is essentially you see that uh, here this BHC uh, involves of course, the CPT infinity minus TS which was also there in the heat transfer number for combustion uh, for evaporation. But now you have this part that is here your heat transfer number contains a very important this chemical heat release rate term which is the QC and uh, this QC actually. Uh, uh, is now dominant over this guy. So, the now the heat transfer is not actually coming from ambient of course, there is some heat transfer of the ambient, but now the bulk of the heat transfer that causes the droplet uh, evaporation and then the combustion of this vapor is essentially this provided by QC and uh, this is normalized by the QV that is the uh, uh, latent heat of evaporation. So, this QC is the, now this term is essentially much much bigger than this term. So, the mainly the droplet evaporation uh, or the droplet vaporization um, is uh, uh, happening through the heat transfer um, uh, through the heat of uh, that is applied by the flame that is situated at a stand of distance of RF. Um, so, then that can be estimated this RF is an important parameter what is the radius of the flame if we have a given uh, the size of the droplet and uh, that is estimated by this uh, once again um, from this reaction sheet assumptions and uh, we can get this by this formula. And once again we can get uh, this uh, temperature in an implicit form where we show that this uh, QC that is this uh, um, that is the heat of combustion is now essentially the same things that is uh, 1 kg of. Uh, 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 yes, one uh, of course uh, one kg of now this is there is no fuel mixture because it's now purely uh, droplet. So uh, so one kg of fuel now uh, when you burn it when essentially gives you raises the temperature from TS to TF and it raises the temperature from T infinity to TF. Of course so these are the stoichiometric balances which shows that the burning is stoichiometric. But then it also is also used for latent heat of evaporation. So the same temperature is by the same uh, argument it is essentially the adiabatic flame temperature but with uh, consideration for the latent heat of evaporation. So, uh, in this case the driving potential uh, is BHC as we have discussed before uh, that is uh, for the driving the droplet evaporation or the droplet vaporizations and uh, the driving potential is BHC it consists of an enthalpy term uh, which is uh, this guy. Uh, as we discussed and this is much larger than the um, uh, enthalpy term and the chemical term the, the enthalpy term is actually this one and this is the chemical term. So, the chemical term is actually much bigger than the enthalpy term and which shows that in the case of droplet uh, uh, combustion of course, if a flame around then uh, this flame gives much more heat and as a result the droplet evaporation is much faster um, okay. um, so in terms of normal droplet vaporization. And then uh, uh, with as a result this B, BHC is of the order of 1 to 10 whereas, this heat transfer number the, the uh, heat transfer uh, um, number for uh, uh, for combustion is out of the order of 1 to 10 whereas, for the heat transfer number of vaporization is less than 1. So, it is a order of 1 my order of magnitude difference is there and TF is the adiabatic flame temperature of the system allowing for latent heat of vaporization as we discussed. And the droplet temperature is close to the liquid boiling point and can be approximated it. However, it can be never reached due to the presence of products and inerts. And uh, we can uh, fold this problem back to the vaporization problem if we said y in 0 infinity uh, uh, that is equal to 0 and then uh, of course, it will lead to the RF to be equal to at, uh, at infinity. All right. So, uh, this uh, using this once again we can relate the burning rate that is uh, L uh, that is MC is equal to 4 pi uh, times lambda by CP RS times log of 1 plus BHC droplet heat transfer uh, number uh, due to combustion add the flame to the vaporization rate that is at the surface. So, essentially the droplet once again is shrinking because of it is uh, losing the mass because the of the phase change of the liquid uh, to vapor phase change and then this vapor goes on to meet the oxidizer and then it burns. So, once again if we do the same thing we can find out this uh, if we uh, set M V equal to M C it is not assumption it is the setting that uh, if you set M V equal to M C and whereas M V is given by minus d d t of fourth pi r cube L mm, that is the rate of change of the mass of the droplet which is a liquid and uh, this integration will uh, essentially um, um, uh, will uh, uh, give you um, will uh, uh, there is a some uh, issue here. So, uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, what this uh, integration will uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, just uh, um, uh, if we just can uh, go back here. Um, just to remove this. Uh, 
this is some problem with this uh, thing then the uh, this uh, integration will essentially this we are essentially what we are doing here is that we are uh, setting this mv to be is equal to uh, m uh, mv equal to nc setting means uh, that this this guy minus ddt of four third pi r cube l to be essentially four pi times lambda by cp times ln of one plus bhc right uh, so uh, then uh, we can we essentially and uh, as we know that we wrote this as rs times drs square dt so then we can write if mv is equal to minus um, uh, 2 pi uh, rho l times rs times drs square dt mm, okay and that is, is equal to 4 pi lambda by cp ln of 1 plus b h c uh, and then this uh, if we uh, integrate this okay um, uh, mm, uh, then what we find is that uh, then if we just cancel these two things pi pi is 2 and then we get d r s square d t is equal to r, uh, lambda by uh, there is a rs also here yes so this rs and this rs uh, cancels lambda by cp times 1 by a rho l okay minus ln of 1 plus b h c okay so now uh, this is essentially constant and if it is constant we can write this as once again the vaporization which is exactly same as the uh, uh, droplet vaporization constant but of course you would note that this droplet um, uh, the, uh, the droplet heat transfer number this is due to combustion the previous one was due to uh, due to uh, um, uh, due to um, uh, due to vaporization and then if you integrate this thing rs d r square dt is equal to kv then what this yields is nothing but then this yields this uh, rs square is equal to rs 0 square minus kv t whereas kv is given by 2 times lambda by cp by rho l that is the density of the liquid ln of 1 plus b h c okay so now if we set once again that the total burning time to estimate we set rs is equal to 0 and then we get rs uh, uh, square is equal to kv times tau c the therefore tau c is equal to uh, rs 0 that is the initial radius by kv okay so this is what we get that is a total burning time or we write it as kc because this involves this uh, here droplet um, uh, the, the because this involves this uh, uh, droplet uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, heat transfer uh, number um, uh, for combustion mm, uh, so um, uh, then uh, uh, this is the total burning time then we get it as uh, this is uh, the thing uh, whereas we, we we can write that this as essentially is equal to kc because it involves kc so this as uh, the we get the total uh, burning time tau c is equal to rs square uh, the initial radius square divided by kc so once again you see that the total time is pro directly proportional to the radius square of the initial of the initial radius square of the droplet of the initial diameter square of the droplet it depends quadratically okay and so that is the thing now um, of course uh, you see that the if you see that formula for kc is essentially lambda by cp times rho l 1 ln of 1 plus bhc now if this is order of 1 if then we can just uh, write this as we can say that kc is essentially proportional to this if this guy is uh, order 1 okay because this this guy is order 1 to 10 so ln of 1 plus bhc will be of the order of of the order of um, uh, 1 essentially so we can say that the case is essentially 2 times lambda by cp by rho l okay and then we can set it as rho g times tg is equal to this and we can estimate have an estimate of kc in this form okay so um, uh, just uh, if we um, 
um, uh, find out the, uh, the experimental observations. If we define this as the normalized radius R s by the initial radius R f as the flame radius by the instantaneous flame from standard of ratio and this is a non-dimensional flame radius and the d square law prediction says that d r s square d t should be equal to constant then uh, a small r f tilde should be equal to constant and uh, capital R f should be monotonically like decreasing and small r f should be order of 1 for hydrocarbon in air and actually we find that um, these laws are reasonably uh, um, uh, some of them are uh, obeyed and we find that d r s square d t is much less than 1 r f tilde actually monotonically increases and is more prominent for low y0 tilde for fuel vapor accumulation accumulation and uh, this uh, rf tilde uh, this is just uh, normalized flame stand of ratio uh, flame stand of radius is essentially 5 to 10 which is arises from the which can be explained from the constant pr uh, property assumptions so with this we uh, close uh, today's uh, class and so we have covered a lot of grounds in the form of we have studied a lot of about non premix flames you have we used the coupling function formulation to see how uh, today's and previous uh, days class uh, we have combined them to see how we have um, basically using the coupling function formulation one can explain the structure of a non premix flame one can obtain the burning flux one can obtain the species profiles one can obtain the temperature profiles and most importantly we can find out that the flame temperature becomes essentially the adiabatic flame temperature for a non premix flame okay uh, for the given uh, fuel air mixture actually fuel mixture on the left hand side air mixture on the right hand side we have uh, uh, we have gone into look at um, um, a standard evaporation of a liquid pool uh, uh, and then um, and then found out on what parameters does this evaporation flux depend on uh, we have introduced a concept of droplet uh, or not droplet but uh, heat transfer number mass transfer number which emerges actually the driving potential for uh, the evaporation flux and larger this droplet um, mass transfer number larger is the air droplet heat transfer number larger the evaporation fluxes are and then we have also seen how both the species and the energy equation are required actually and that is why these two numbers come uh, to describe completely the evaporation and then sometimes to we also need the thermodynamics in the clausius clapeyron relation to find the relation between your species mass fraction or species mole fraction with the um, corresponding temperature. And then using these things and uh, this concept we have gone on to describe droplet evaporation. We have found that the droplet evaporation has a uh, the time taken for a droplet to completely evaporate is essentially uh, R s that is the radius of the droplet the radius of the initial uh, the radius of the droplet at the initial time squared divided by a constant called the droplet vaporization constant. We have seen that when you consider a flame uh, droplet combustion that is when this if this liquid droplet is considered full with uh, fuel vapor once this uh, evaporates um, it um, uh, this fuel vapor can meet the oxidizer and we can have a flame and then we have found that the in this case the flame is actually the leading uh, source for the heat required for the droplet evaporation and then uh, also we found that the time taken for the droplet to burn uh, is actually also directly proportional to the R s square by K c whereas K c here is the droplet um, uh, combustion constant. Uh, so, with that um, we just um, will uh, close today's class and then we will move on to non premix flames. So, uh, thank you very much.